Welcome to the Singer World of Sewing, standing for innovation, superior quality, and remarkable quality for money. Singer has become a household name around the globe in its rich company history, a name linked to sewing like no other brand. From fashion to trendy accessories, cozy home textiles, or personalized giftware, Sewing enthusiasts worldwide enjoy innovative concepts that make sewing easy and great fun. The Singer Brilliance 6160 and 6180 will offer you an exciting range of decorative stitches to add that extra dimension to your sewing projects. With a useful range of utility stitches, automatic needle threader, reverse and tie-off function, and selection of one-step buttonholes, you will discover that the Singer Brilliance range has you covered for just about anything you can dream up. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Singer sewing machine. This instructional DVD is about getting to know your sewing machine and the basics of machine sewing. You'll see how easy it is to achieve professional results on any of your sewing projects. Let's get started. Your new Singer sewing machine is equipped with stitch programs that cope with all modern fabric types. All stitch types are shown on the front and can easily be selected with the fast pattern number selection buttons. Connecting your sewing machine. Take the cord from the foot controller and plug it into the single pin socket above the main socket. Plug the power cord into the machine's main socket and your wall socket. Turn on power and light with the main switch. Freearm flatbed conversion. Your machine can be used as a flatbed or converted to a freearm. It converts into a slim freearm machine in seconds, simply by removing the accessory tray. To remove the accessory tray, Hold it firmly and pull it off to the left. The free arm area makes sewing hard to reach places or tubular areas like cuffs or trouser legs extremely easy. The accessory tray includes a compartment for convenient storage of all machine accessories. Covering the feed dog's darning plate. For special sewing techniques, like free motion embroidery, monogramming or darning, you will need to purchase an optional darning embroidery foot. The feed dogs must be covered with the darning plate, allowing you to freely guide your fabric. We recommend removing the presser foot before you slip on the darning plate. The darning plate is also necessary for sewing on buttons where you don't want the fabric to be fed by the machine. Presser foot lifter different positions. The presser foot lifter lets you set the presser foot in three different positions. In lowest position for sewing, in center position for placing the fabric under the presser foot and removing it, and for changing presser feet in highest position for removing extremely thick fabric layers. Changing presser feet. Changing presser feet is incredibly easy. Make sure the needle is in the up position. Raise the presser foot lifter. Push the presser foot release button to remove the foot. Place the desired foot on the needle plate aligning the presser foot pin with the foot holder. Lower the presser foot lifter to snap on the foot. Changing the needle. It's absolutely important to insert the needle correctly. That means with the flat side toward the back. To change the needle, raise the needle bar to its highest position. Loosen the needle clamp screw with the flat screwdriver. Remove the needle, insert the new needle. Push the needle up as far as it can go and tighten the needle clamp screw with the screwdriver. Different types of needles are available for different types of fabrics. Stretch needles, for example, with a ball point for easy handling of stretch materials, 
or an extra strong jeans needle for convenient sewing of denims. Needles should be changed regularly. It is recommended to use Singer brand needles in your Singer sewing machine. To wind the bobbin, first place the thread on the spool pin and secure it with the spool pin cap. Now, guide the thread under the first thread guide, maintaining tension on the thread with your right hand. Wind it counterclockwise around the tension disc. Put the thread end through the bobbin like this from the center, and then out through the hole on the bobbin. Place the bobbin onto the bobbin winding spindle. Push the bobbin to the right. This will declutch the hand wheel, which means that your needle won't go up and down while you're winding the bobbin. Hold the end of the thread and then step on the foot controller. The bobbin will begin to fill. Stop to trim the thread tail. Continue to fill the bobbin. It will stop when it is full. Push both the bobbin and spindle to the left. This will re-engage the needle automatically for sewing. Now, remove the bobbin from the bobbin winding spindle, then cut the thread. Bobbin insertion. To insert or remove a bobbin, make sure the needle is in its highest position. Remove the accessory tray from the machine and then open the hinged cover. Pull the bobbin case tab and then remove the bobbin case. Insert the full bobbin and pull the thread to ensure the bobbin turns in a clockwise direction. Pull the thread through the slit and under the finger. Hold the bobbin case by the hinged latch. Now insert it into the shuttle, making sure the metal finger on the bobbin case is vertical and fits into the groove of the shuttle. Threading. Your machine is very easy to thread. First, tap the foot controller once to raise the needle to its highest position. Raise the presser foot lifter. Place the thread on the spool pin and secure it with the spool pin cap. While firmly holding the threads, simply follow the threading path and down into the thread guide behind the needle clamp guide located just above the needle. To make sure you have threaded the machine correctly, refer to thread tension. Automatic Needle Threader The automatic needle threader makes needle threading extremely easy. Make sure the needle is in the highest position and place the thread under the metal guide. Pull down the lever of the needle threader and gently swing the lever to the back as far as it will go. A small hook moves to the front through the needle's eye. Pull the thread to the right and under the small hook from below so the hook catches the thread. Swing back the lever and the needle will catch the thread through the needle's eye. Pull the thread to the back and release. Bringing up the bobbin thread. Before you start sewing, you will need to raise the bobbin thread. To do this, hold the upper thread with your left hand. Turn the hand wheel toward you which will lower and then raise the needle. It is important that the hand wheel moves forward or toward you, not backward or away from you. As you turn the hand wheel, lightly pull the needle thread. The bobbin thread will be drawn up through the hole. After pulling up the bobbin thread, place both threads under the presser foot toward the back. If your bobbin thread doesn't want to pull up through this hole on your machine, make sure the bobbin thread isn't caught by the hinged cover or the accessory tray. Thread Tension the bobbin thread tension can be tested by removing the bobbin case and bobbin and holding them suspended by the thread tail. Jerk it once or twice. If the thread unwinds an inch or two, the tension is set correctly. If the thread doesn't unwind at all, the thread is set too tightly. If the bobbin case drops too much, the tension is set too loosely. To adjust the bobbin thread tension, 
Turn the small screw located here on the side of the bobbin case. Turn the screw left if the tension is too tight, or turn the screw right if the tension is too loose. Correct tension is important for good sewing. This is the thread tension dial for the needle thread. For most sewing projects, you can set the dial to 5. When you sew, thread accumulating on the underside of the fabric is an indication that the upper threading path of the machine is not threaded correctly. Remove the fabric from the machine and try this simple test. Remove the thread completely from the machine. Be sure the presser foot lifter is in the up position. Rethread the upper thread, leaving the needle unthreaded. Leave the presser foot up, then pull the thread toward you. It should pull freely. Now, put the presser foot lifter down and try pulling the upper thread toward you again. It should resist the pulling, and you should feel a significant difference in the tension. If you are still able to pull the thread freely when the presser foot is down, repeat this process. Stitch selection. Selecting a stitch program can't get any easier. Simply identify the program number relevant to the desired stitch from the pattern number reference guide panel. Press the up arrows for the stitch pattern number. The up arrow on the left goes up in increments of 10, and the up arrow on the right goes up in increments of 1. The stitch selection will be displayed on the LCD screen. Always make sure your needle is in the highest position when selecting the program number. Stitch length. Each stitch program has a pre-programmed optimal stitch length and width that can be adjusted manually if needed. Select a pattern and adjust the width by pressing either the east-west cursor and adjust the length by pressing either the north-south cursor. The changes will be displayed on the LCD screen. This button lets you sew in reverse if held down while sewing a straight stitch and zigzag. For all other stitches, it becomes a tacking function. It will make four tiny tacking stitches to tie off as soon as it is pressed. Straight stitch. Straight stitch is the most frequently used utility stitch. For straight stitching, use the general purpose foot. Select straight stitch with stitch length 2.5. Place the fabric under the presser foot. Lower the presser foot and slowly start sewing. After a few stitches, press the reverse sewing button and sew a few stitches. Release it and continue sewing. At the end of your seam, repeat the reverse sewing action. Raise the needle to its highest position. Pull the fabric toward the back and cut the thread with the machine's thread cutter. Zigzag stitch. Snap on the general purpose foot. The zigzag stitch is used for finishing or overcasting raw fabric edges to prevent the fabric from fraying. The presser foot must be placed along the fabric so the needle stitches along the left side of the fabric while overcasting the right raw fabric edge. The zigzag also looks great when used as decorative satin stitch. Simply select a short stitch length for satin stitching. For creating special effects, you can also adjust the stitch width. Other utility stitches and their applications. Multi-stitch zigzag. Snap on the general purpose foot. The multi-stitch zigzag is ideal for attaching elastic or overcasting. It's also perfect for darning tears. Reduce the stitch length for darning. Buttonholes. Your machine has an easy-to-use automatic buttonhole. Slightly reduce the upper thread tension by moving the tension dial to a lower number. Select stitch number 74 on model 6180 and stitch number 56 on model 6160. Place your button in the backslide of the buttonhole foot. 
Push it closed until the button is firmly held in the slide and snap on the foot. Pull down the buttonhole lever gently so it is between the two stoppers. While holding the top thread, start sewing. Cut the top thread after a few stitches. Continue sewing the buttonhole until the program is complete. Your buttonhole will be sewn fully automatically in one easy step. On behalf of our dedicated team, congratulations on the purchase of your new Singer sewing machine. Singer. More than just sewing. Singer. Standing for innovation, superior quality and remarkable quality for money.